Hello. So, this year, I underwent one of those life experiences that every parent will go through. My youngest child started school. And I couldn't quite get over the shock at this ceremony that when he finishes school, it will be 2030. And I started to think about what the world will look like then and the skills that he's going to learn to prepare him for that world. This talk is short and we don't have time to go here, but suffice to say that the world in 2030 will be very different to the one today. And there's a general consensus around the kind of skills that our children will need to thrive in that world. Things like creative and innovative thinking, ability to learn and adapt, communication, collaboration and cooperation, this drive from going from cognitive to more social skills. But I would like to suggest that there's another skill that they're going to need, knowing their being. I think that if our children know their being, we can change the world. So I'd like to explain what I mean and also talk about three reasons that I think this in today's talk. The area, the interest in who we are, our being, and the states of being that we operate in has grown wildly in the last 10 years because of developments in technology that have enabled us to look inside the brain and body, the machinery, and have a look at what's actually happening in these states in real time. And we've been able to, to look at the intricate relationship between the brain and the mind and start to replicate and play about with some of these components of our states of beings. So we can change the brain activity, for example, or aspects of the physiology, and we're able to replicate different states of being and look at them. And it's proving really beneficial. The state of flow, for example, um, Stephen Kotler, one of the, um, the founders of the Flow Genome Project, defines flow, the state of flow, as an optimum state of being. And it's been found that the benefits of flow include these, a 500% increase in productivity, a 490% increase in skill acquisition, 403%, 430% increase in creative problem solving, and three days of heightened creativity after entering a flow state. So, the attributes that flow maximizes are the very things that our children are going to need in their future. In fact, James Slavitt from Greylock Ventures says that the flow state percentage is the number one management metric for the 21st century. The point of all of this is that the state of flow is within our being. We're using our brain and body to access this state of being. So it's always accessible to us. Wouldn't it be cool if we could teach our kids how to access that state of being? If we could, it would be really useful for them in their future. This was the first main reason I want to discuss about why I think teaching their kids about their being is really useful. And the second thing is this. So our children are in a mental health crisis. One in four of our children has a mental health illness. One in four of our children has self-harmed. The rates of suicide amongst our children are at an all-time high. Children as young as nine are killing themselves. This is not okay. All the statistics say that these are getting worse. Nobody is saying this is getting better. This is not okay. Think about what this means. In your in local circles of family and friends with children, one in four of your families are going to be broken apart by this. It's not okay. So what are we doing about it? Well, we need to do more. And I would like to suggest that we need to do something different. Einstein said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. In psychology, the most successful models of therapy for depression Things like mindfulness-based cognitive therapy are based on the notion that the intellect doesn't always help us out. In fact, sometimes it can make things worse. So healing in MBCT uh, is based on getting out of the ordinary state of being. So perhaps it could be in these states of getting out of the container where the problems lie, getting out of our brain and body, transcending, going beyond the self where the problems are, that we might find the answers we're seeking. Psychiatrist Ronald Griffiths defines the state of transcendence as 
Transient moments where people feel lifted above the hustle and bustle of daily life. Their sense of self fades away and they feel connected to something bigger. In such states, people typically report feeling of awe and rapture, of time stopping, and of feeling a sense of unity with other people, nature, God, or the universe. And the state of transcendence is a fundamental part of human experience. From the dawn of our species, people have been losing themselves in ritualistic prayer or dance or music. In fact, um, Kotler and Wheel in their 2017 book, Stealing Fire, calculated that every year we spend four trillion dollars on getting out of our own heads. Plato described this um, state as where normal waking consciousness vanishes completely and is replaced by intense euphoria and powerful connection to greater intelligence. Previously put in either the spiritual experience or the psychosis box, the latest advances in technology mean that we can look at these states in a scientific way. We can look at what's happening in the brain and body when the, we're in these states and we can start to unpack them. So scientists are beginning to look at the similarities, um, the neurological similarities underlying these experiences from thousands of people's reports of these experiences and some being replicated and brought on in the labs. And what we're finding is that in these experiences, there's often profound positive impacts for the human psyche. It's thought that the reason that there's a healing ability in the state of transcendence is because of this um, ability to induce a feeling of self-loss. So David Yadin says, when the self temporarily disappears, so many to some of the fears and anxiety. William James says, we can experience union with something larger than ourselves and in that union find our greatest peace. And the benefits of the state of transcendence are long lasting too. So we found that um, people who've been put into these states or have experienced these states report higher levels of meaning to their lives. They're more fulfilled with their lives. They have a, a deeper sense of purpose. They've also found that they have higher levels of oxytocin, which is the hormone that bonds people together, which is not surprising then that in other studies they've found that people who've had these experiences are more likely to help others. So, Yadin also said that most of us have had a degree of an experience of transcendence in our everyday lives, and about a third of us have experienced that deep sense of unity, whether it's with nature or everything or your God or whatever, a deep sense of unity, a third of us. So this isn't a state that's abnormal, that's not common. It's just that when it happens, it's quite fleeting and unintentional. But with the information we have now about what these states are and the benefits they can offer, wouldn't it be a good idea if we started to tell our kids that this state is accessible to them. It's within our brain and body. And this brings me to the last point, to the third reason I'd like to discuss today. Because of all of this surge of interest in our states of beings, there's a surge of, um, there's a huge industry in, of neurotechnology that's growing. So the world that our children will find themselves in will be flooded by devices, tracking and monitoring devices to help them alter their states of being. So whether it's a heart rate monitor or brain entrainment or something to help you alter your nutritional input, they'll have devices very easy to use and handy around to be able to monitor their states of being and get them to more optimal states of being. They're already on the market, there's heaps of them. So this is brilliant, but I do have a concern. Is it possible that if we're not careful, we might end up putting the locus of control on the technology instead of the power within ourselves? That if we're not vigilant about telling our children the amazing beings that they are, that they might end up being misled down a path when they're led to believe that something outside of them, a device, is needed for them to change their state? We have to remember, as human beings, 
that we are the reason this tech revolution exists. We inspired it because of our innate capacity to access these states, which are a part of our being. We could say there's two types of tech. There's the kind of technology that do things that we can't do, like a car. And there's the kind of tech that help us to do things, but better, like a pair of glasses, spectacles. So if we get into thinking that neurotech is doing this for us, we're in a danger of losing our very human beingness. And with that, our creativity, our innovation, the things that make us human, because we won't be smarter than technology. So it's really important we remember that this is us doing it with the help of a device, not the device doing it. If you put your pair of glasses on a rock, they can't see. They need your eyes to work. If you put an EEG device on a rock, you won't get a reading. It needs your brain to work. And let's face it, we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of discovering who we truly are. So let's make sure we use technology to help us explore our evolution and ensure that it doesn't take over our evolution. Baroness Susan Greenfeld, um, the renowned neuroscientist, talks about mind change. She reminds us that our brain is a specialist adapter. It, it adapts and evolves and changes to the environment that it's in. And that the 21st century culture and environment is vastly changing, increasingly dominated by screens and technology and sedentary lifestyle, is having an effect on our brains, on our children's brains. Whether good or bad, our children's brains are changing. As a species, we are going into a state of mind change. So, with the inevitable changes in our kids' brains that's happening, and the mental health crisis, and the vastly expanding field of neurotechnology, I think there has never been a better time to tell our kids about their being. What if we told our kids from a young age that their very being, the thing that's constantly changing, evolving, adapting, is in this constant a dance between states of being, that you can be in an angry state, or a joyful state, or a stress state, or an optimal state, or a transcendent state. And in that state, you might find the power to heal yourself from a state that you might feel trapped in. And if you feel trapped within the confines of your body and your brain or the world, that you have within you the power to transcend that current state of your reality, that current state of being, and create a different one. That we are, ultimately, our being is more than this body and brain, and that we can access states where we can expand past this, out, out until we're everything, and it's there that we'll find the answers, not in a piece of technology. Dr. Joe Dispenza says that knowledge is power, but knowledge about the self is self-empowerment. I think if we teach our kids their being, we're handing them back their self-empowerment. So when my son finishes school, I would like to think, I like to vision, I do vision, that my son and all of our children will be fully self-empowered and know the true fullness of their being. Then we have changed the world. Thank you.